Hi everyone, welcome to eLearn Chat, where you always learn something new, and that today is no exception. Joining me is our good friend and co-host, Leslie Price. She's with www.learnappeal.com. Hey Leslie, how are you? I'm very good, thanks. It's been uh, a wee bit wet and windy in the UK at the moment, but we're hoping for some, now that May has arrived, you know, the lusty May, we're hoping for some sunshine. Now we're in May and we are having June gloom, which is very normal for this part of California, about a month early. So we'll see how that continues. Uh, that means it's <laughs> overcast and a little gloomy. No rain, very little rain, but just gloomy. I don't mind. I, weather's weather. I don't care what it is. But I kind of like it when it's like this because the sun's not beating on you, especially when you drive into work in the morning. It's actually pleasant. So anyway, we've got... <laughs> We've got a great show lined up for today, and um, here we go. And we are back, and today we've got back on Mohammed Daniel, who is doing some really incredible and fun stuff. Uh, in, in England, and um, he's a good friend of Leslie's, and he also does some work with Learn Appeal. And, and Leslie, you know, we, we, we did apologize profusely to Mohammed last time. We had a problem in the show. We couldn't get, we had a problem with sound. And after about a week of trying to figure out what it was, it, it drove us crazy. We lost all shows that week and a little bit the week after. It was a loose cable, if you can believe it. <laughs> one loose cable that didn't feel loose, but one small jiggle, a, a millimeter of jiggle, and it would take down our, our audio system. So everything is now taped down, and we've had a week and a half of good shows. So we're back, and we're apologizing profusely to Mohammed and anybody else that we've had to cancel on. It was, it was really a shame for a cable. Um, well, here, are, Leslie, would you like to do the honor of introduction? Yeah, well, um, I met Mohammed now about oh, six six months or so ago, and we were in. Mohammed and I were introduced by um, Wes Atkinson of Apatier, and Apatier are the company that um, provide the capsule and also provide the authoring tool for us so that we can create content for the disadvantaged and disconnected. And Mohammed, um, he'll tell you himself a bit of background about his career, but he decided he was going to set up an e-learning club. So not a computer club, an e-learning club. Um, and I'll say, I'll let him tell you the background, but the fantastic news is that we've now got 11 to 14 year old girls um, who, who live in a fairly deprived part of, you know, the UK. It's not a part of the UK that is rolling in, in money. And these young girls are now learning the skills to create e-learning content, which to us at Learn Appeal is brilliant because it's a way for us to help nurture and grow young talent in our industry. So over to Mohammed. Hi, thanks, Leslie. Um, yeah, where do I begin, really? I suppose um, with the reasons why I decided to make the club, um, I've been teaching computer science or ICT, as it's sometimes called uh, in the UK. They seem to like change the name of the subject all the time uh, since about 2003, on and off. And I've always found it really difficult to actually engage the students, which is something that you'd think would be easy because technology is such a part of their daily lives. But the problem with the curriculum, at least in the UK, is it's very constricting. So they'll uh, you know, focus a lot on assessments and getting data in and trying to understand where the students are. And to do that, you have to, you know, test them a lot and give them exams and then give them content that goes towards those exams and none of that is very creative you know and and people want to be creative people want to create so even when I've done computer clubs it's been quite difficult to actually find that creativity because then you have the problem that the kids come along and they want to make stuff that looks like 
you know, what they do on the internet, the games and the web pages mm -hmm. that they're re regularly surfing, like Facebook or Snapchat or whatever. And of course, that's really hard to do. So you teach them, you know, HTML or something, and what they come up with is not something that's particularly good looking. Uh, and so then their interest goes. So, so what we've tried to do, or what we've managed to do, I guess, really, with this club, is, is find a way to kind of come in the middle of that and give them access to professional learning design software, which then enables them to create really good looking content very quickly. And what it's done is quite interesting because it's engaged them quicker than I've ever seen kids be engaged before uh, in any type of computer club. And now these young girls are like uh, thinking of themselves as young learning designers. And, mm. and we took them on a trip to Brighton uh, to meet some learning designers. And it's, uh, it's, it's really good. It's, it's, it's really good, going well. So, Mohammed, what do you think made them get so into it? Uh, I really think it's the uh, the opportunity to be to creative. <clears throat> I think that's what that and seeing the fruits of their work very quickly. Yeah. And you know the problem is if you just do a computer club, um, what's it actually about? You know, is it about making computers? Is it about learning to program? Even if you're learning to program, what are you programming? You know, I think we kind of tend to forget that technology itself is a medium. It's not really an end in itself. I mean, it may be for some really, you know, people who really love computer science and go on to study it further and do degrees in it and PhDs in it. But for most of us, you know, and the vast majority of the kids we teach, for sure, computers are a medium. You know, they're a, they're a way right. they're going to communicate. And so they may be going on to use computers in their lives, in, in jobs that we don't even know yet or, or that don't even exist yet or have just come to be. Um, but it's certainly not really in a technical way. They don't need to know how to code, for example, necessarily to do so many jobs with computers. So when we come in with this uh, e-learning software, especially because Evolve is, is so easy to get, get used to. I mean, it's not, it's not like PowerPoint, but it, it takes time. But these kids have got their heads around it, you know. Hmm. And um, the fact that they're making good-looking web pages now that are to do with learning um, then can let them go to the next step. Because now their attention is, their interest is like in there. So then they can think, well, what lies behind that? Maybe they'll look into the code and maybe they'll get into the code or maybe they'll focus on graphic design or, or animation. But it's like it's given them that hook in, which we find so difficult to get as teachers. Now, how quickly did they begin to learn? Was it like they just kind of just took to it or were some of them struggling? How, how did they react to a tool that they'd never seen before? Um, well, it's funny because rather than be too prescriptive about it, I just sort of got them logins through Leslie. I mean, that in itself took ages, didn't it, Leslie, because of... GDPR, and so you'd get these kids yeah. saying, "Yeah, I'm coming." You've also and got, I, and I don't know about. Can I just interrupt there, um, Mohammed? Yeah. I don't know what it's like in the in the states, but in the UK, it's not just. Um, data protection issues mm. around children and people under age young people you know under the age of 16 18 there are huge e-safety and right. safeguarding issues so you have to be absolutely sure that the young people involved are not going to be put at risk are mm -hmm. going to be safe that the system is secure and that's one of the reasons why we did it through the charity, because as a registered charity, um, we've got, you know, uh, we've got our own um, protection mm -hmm. there. So everybody who signs <coughs> up to be on Evolve actually has to sign something. Okay. Um, so we were we had to be incredibly careful. And when you're working with young people, mm -hmm. you have to do that. that I mean, Mohammed will agree that is of critical importance if and, and you're going to do it. And that's probably pretty similar here. I know I was involved in a youth program years ago. It was called the U.S. Navy League Sea Cadets. And it just teaches kids how to learn about the sea and the Navy and, and things. It was fun. 
And you have to go through, in our case, we had to go through an FBI check. They had to make sure that you have no criminal backgrounds, blah, blah, blah. So they, they, they keep the kids protected. Also, we were mandated reporters. That means if you see signs of abuse or any other issue, and that's a really, care, you have to be very careful with that, you have to report it. You have to report it to social workers yeah. or social services to make sure that those kids aren't being abused. There's nothing like that going on. So I, I imagine when there's privacy laws and everything, so I imagine it's probably similar. Um, I yeah. don't know if we're as stringent yet. I know there's in some places, and I think it's also state dependent. So some states are more stringent than others. So not not sure what the laws are on that, but but yeah, it's it's a good point. You do want to protect the kids. Yeah, and that and that was yeah. that was one of the reasons they've been registered through the Learn Appeal site mm -hmm. because we can keep very <clears throat> close tabs right. on the Learn Appeal site and Muhammad um, has got, you know, Muhammad can actually see everything that the girls are doing. Mm -hmm. And not only that, he can also see what other people are creating. Oh, okay. So he can make sure that nobody else on the instance of Learn Appeal is creating anything that would be in any way detrimental right. to the, to the, the the young people, to the girls. Sure, sure, that's great. Sorry to interrupt, but I think that's that's actually. No, a good point. If anybody's good going point. to set up, anybody's going to set up a club like this, I think that that is a key point that they have mm. to they have to take, make sure that they do and take on board. Now, Mohammed, did they did the girls also wind up collaborating with each other? That it's not just individual, but did they also work in teams? They're starting to, yeah. Okay. I mean, so so basically what happened was we got them registered through Learn Appeal. And I think also a big point of this is that we are, the, the big intention of the club is making courses for Learn Appeal. So mm -hmm. it has a real focus as well. I think this is, I think we forget how it, you need a focus. Like, like we as adults always need focuses. But when we teach students, sometimes we just think, just learn this just for the sake of it. And the kids are always saying, but what's the use of this? What's mm -hmm. it for? You know, and it's very hard to give them a reason a lot of the time with maths and things like that. Yeah. Um, but, but with making a, a web page or with making a learning course, again, you still have to give it a focus. So because we've got this real focus, we're making courses for Learn Appeal. And these courses, if they're good enough, you know, if they pass the Leslie test, then uh, <laughs> they, they will go out. <laughs> they will be given to Eric who is our contact in Kenya or maybe somewhere else and they'll actually be used by people and this has really motivated the girls you know so so they kind of got started just playing with the software and it was amazing how much they they found out and then they came with questions and then I'd answer the questions so it did need someone like me who knows Evolve but rather than be too dictatorial I kind of let them play which they naturally do anyway as as kids you know um, and they found out so much to do and then I just sort of like guided them in the right direction when they came across problems and then before you know it they were like exploring components that I hadn't even used properly and showing me how to use them so, yeah. and I've been using it for three years so um, it was it was really it was really interesting well, you know, it's then funny, we isn't... managed so then we managed to to organize a trip to Brighton because Brighton is just an hour away from us and uh, just by coincidence happens to be the e-learning hub of the UK. <laughs> um, and there's all these design companies. And uh, Leslie having her, all her great connections, networking queen, um, she uh, managed to organize some, some uh, visits with three companies. And I've actually got photos of the, the visits and I can show you if you like, it's quite nice to see. Oh, sure, Would you like me to fine. show you that? Sure. So let me see if I can share the screen. You know, one thing fun about the kids also is they don't know what they don't know. So they don't have those obstacles yeah. of what can and can't be done, which is great. Oh, that's gone in. It's looping itself. It's looping itself, yeah. I don't know why it's Does it always that. do that? It quite often does it, Mohammed. Oh, okay. You hey, just Harold? shut off a yeah. corner somewhere. Yeah. Should I, um, should I just click on to what I want to show you? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Can you see that photo? Yeah. Yes. Brilliant. So this is the first company we went to. 
this is Kineo. And it was great because we just arrived there and you can see these, these young girls. They've probably never, a lot of them, I know actually, a few of them hadn't hardly been out of Hastings before. Um, and suddenly here we are in this like boardroom of this top-notch design company having lectures and, and refreshments and stuff. And uh, it was great, wasn't it, Leslie? It was, it was really good. Oh, it, I mean, it was, it, was, it was absolutely brilliant. It was, it was, I mean, and then we went to, we, we actually went to three of the top companies. So we went to Kineo, mm -hmm. we went to so Unicorn Training. Yeah. I, I think I can go to the next one, hopefully. Um, sorry. Um, oh, I thought I would be able to go between these a bit easier. Um, all right, let me go back. And, you've got too um, many. You've got too many windows open. Too many windows. <laughs> Let me go into it like. I love it. Go. He's got you know. This is yeah. This is them. At, this is them at um, Unicorn. So this is Unicorn. So, so you can see a quite a different feel to the company, isn't it? Yeah, and and, and Unicorn again, yeah. gave all the girls little stuffed toys. Unicorn. That's yes. cute. <laughs> can you see? Can you yeah. see the way they're holding the unicorns? Yeah, they love that's them. That's so cute. <laughs> yeah. So these are these um, are kids, you know. These they're eleven, yeah. twelve years old. Um, so they they are kids, but at the same time, they've got these talents, and I've got some of their work I can show you as well, which is interesting. Yeah. And there's Leslie so showing them the Learn Appeal capsule and talking about that, isn't it? Yeah. And the next company we went to is uh, Leo Learning, part of the Learning Technologies Group. Nice. And that's one of the girls there. Um, because the, the, the learning designers said to the girls, are, are you really, you know, they were showing them stuff that they'd been doing. Mm -hmm. And then the learning designer said, and are you actually creating stuff? And the girls are all going, oh, yes, yes. Can we show you? <laughs> Can we show you now? Nice. So this and is the girls showing, showing their, their, stuff. their So Leslie, stuff. you were there too. You got to go and, and enjoy yeah. this. Yeah, yeah I this went to best. enjoy it. There's one of, the, one of the girls yeah. there yes. actually showing what she's done. And what was also interesting, so the next place we went to, which was Leo, one of the designers there started asking questions and doing stuff. And then the girls started giving feedback. They, hmm. they said, oh, <laughs> have you thought of doing this? Or that doesn't make much sense. <laughs> have you thought of doing uh, that? And the designer's going, wow, that's a really good idea. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's the There's saying? Out of the, mouth, out of the mouth of babes. Yeah. So this is, this is what, Beth. She's what, one of the, the best girls in the club in terms of her Evolve skills. This is Wes behind her, the guy who made Evolve. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. So he came along. And this is, I think it's Karen, isn't it? I think she's like uh, one of the creative leads in um, in Unicorn, and you can yeah. see how kind of astonished she was at the quality of what Beth had done. You know, so yeah. she literally they said if if we <clears throat> if they were old enough, we'd offer them jobs as trainee designers. Yes, they did. That's great. They actually That's did. That's what they said. Yeah. Yeah. They, and, and what was also interesting is when we were there, and that was us at, at uh, Leo That's Learning. Leo. Yeah. But when when we were when we were there, um, the girls were learning all about new skills. So they were learning about how you need to plan a project, what storyboarding means, and then they started asking all these questions. And then some of them actually then said, "Oh." Maybe we need to go back and start again and redo what we've done. So what we've done now is only a test. Yeah. 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 So now after that visit, after seeing it in action, now we've come back and they're much more talking about working in teams. Uh, so they're going on to each other's courses and giving each other feedback and comments. Um, and now they've started planning again. So we've started a new course now and we've taken – this, from, which is I've got from one of my, from my freelancing role, this is the kind of document that I've been given to work from, like a scoping template, mm -hmm. which I guess you guys are kind of very used to. And so it just sort of specifies what's on each page, what the outcomes are of each page, what component in Evolve you're going to use, and then any details. 
And, and you can see that they've already done this and they would not have done this before. If I'd have told them to do this at the beginning, they'd have just not come back to the club. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know? But now proactively, they're, they're deciding to do these, these pages. Interesting. And, and really planning their work. So it is, it's really interesting what, what, what difference it can make First, to let people and look play at, with software. Look at, look at the, yeah. the subject matter, Rick. So it's nutrition. Mm-hmm. How do you safely prepare food? How yeah. do you know food is cooked? You know, text, checklist, game, mm-hmm. you know. Yep. They're, they're actually thinking about what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's incredible. Exactly it's great. what we expect of learning designers. I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting. Now it's funny because on uh, the other hand, there's there's one thing, and and Mohammed, from from meeting you, I, I'd say you're probably a pretty humble guy, but did you ever think that one day some of these kids might say, you know, if it wasn't for Mr. Daniel, I never would have <laughs> kept going to school, and and believe it or not, you're probably going to be one of those teachers that has that said about him because kids remember these things more than anything else in school. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, no, I mean that would be lovely. But I, I really do think it's it's one of these things where you've given them something that maybe it, whether it changes their life or not, I don't know. But it will definitely be something they remember for the rest of their life. Yep. You know, yep. and it may when help them. It may them spark now, that curiosity all, all little, and, and to keep going, which is great. Absolutely great. Yeah. Can you, can you girl, show Rick one please. of their courses at all, yeah, Mohammed? Sure, yeah. Is it possible? I was just going to say. I was just going to say on that note that one of the girls has told me that. She's got the lanyard. You know, you go into companies and they give you a lanyard, mm-hmm. like an yeah. ID badge, and, yep. and then you hand it back. Well, she she kept hers. I don't know how she managed <laughs> to keep it, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, she said she's got it on her wall, hanging it up on oh, her wall. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> you know, I thought that was so sweet. So this is Beth's course um, on healthcare, And you can see she's taken a lot of time to get the header in there and the, the text over it. Mm-hmm. Um and then you come in, and she's used like uh, this is a this is a dialogue component, where you know it's like people talking to each other. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty psychedelic. <laughs> that's bad. <clears throat> but that um, that's but fine. The, the the content is good, you know. Yeah. It's a good <clears throat> it's a good introduction. How old is How uh, old is Beth? Uh, Beth's eleven. Eleven. Wow. So this has been yeah. designed by an 11-year-old, mm-hmm. Rick. With no, no help. No, I mean, and there's a little cute attention to the graphics and everything. And then she's got some like flip cards here, which are quite nice, an embedded video. Um, and then she's actually started using a branching component here, which is quite a complex thing to do a branching scenario, you know. And it leads on and she gets choices. And this is something she's building. So it's kind of a work in progress. But, you know, they're really adventurous in terms of looking, whereas we kind of might go, oh, I'll, I'll need to, you know, you know, like learn how to use that first before I even try it. They just go, oh, I'm just going to try that. I'm just going to do that, you know. And um, Diana, she's done a course on photography, <laughs> which I think has got a really nice feel to it, you know, the design feel to it. And it's funny, somebody doing a course of photography who's only about 10, 11, 11 or 12, it's pretty good. Yeah, and the, the big thing is they're sourcing the content for these. Mm-hmm. So they're going onto the internet and they're going onto sites and YouTube channels and they're finding out. So they're learning about photography and sure. about healthcare. And, and Mohammed's well, been, been teaching them all about how you need to make sure that it's got a Creative Commons license, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that you can't, just, you can't just steal things, you know, because that's not the right thing to do. You've got to make sure that everything right. is all proper. And, and the girls actually understand it, don't they, Mohammed? They do. Yeah, yeah, they're quite clued up on that stuff, more than you'd think. And, they've even, you know, they've made games here as well and... I don't know what the right answer is, but you can see the kind of thing they've made. Um, so it's interesting stuff, you know. It's a, it, it's yeah. really interesting to see where it's going to go. And you know what I find interesting too is that they have a pretty good eye for design. It's not bad at all. Yeah, it's pretty good. 
Well, considering so think... they're so young mm -hmm. and they're watching yeah. um, the the Evolve have, um, Appetier have made lots and lots of videos mm -hmm. that people can look at to learn how to use, you know, the authoring tool. And the girls are going on and looking at um, all the videos and you know reading listening to them watching them and then going back and saying mr daniel did you know that you can do branching <laughs> scenarios and this means blah 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 all yeah. right okay <laughs> yeah actually wes has done a nice job on the video a lot of them are his and he's got a nice voice he's very pleasant and he does a good job explaining things yeah yeah anyway you can you can stop your screen sharing now Okay, oh, yeah, that's another one. I was just going to show you the yeah. design, the design view. So this is what they work in. I don't know if you guys uh, are aware of Evolve, mm -hmm. but this is what they work in. Yeah. Um, so it's it's not it's not really complicated, but it does require a bit of time to get to know. It's not the easiest thing, you know. It's not you're not going to just like it's not like PowerPoint or something. No, it's a web um, development. And then tool. each of these are a yeah. component. And you go into it, and you know you find how to do the separate thing. So I'm I'm pretty impressed by how quickly they've got their heads around it. Yeah, and the good thing about this is not only are they learning e-learning, they're learning design and web web-based design too, which is which is something they can take with them. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And they all thought before, you know, when they were doing this at the beginning, when, when Wes and I talked to them initially, they all thought that to do anything like this, anything at all like this, they would need a degree in IT. Hmm. No. No. But they, they, but they genuinely believed that. Sure. That's what, that's what they believed. And what we're trying to do now and what... Um, I think mean, the, the barrier, the great barrier that Muhammad has, has gone through with these girls is they now realize that an awful lot of it is practical skills. Yeah. <laughs> it is. And for example, and, even, even in yeah. IT, which is just nothing more than a word that's a catch-all for information technology, that captures a, a thousand things. It's, it's very misleading as to what it is. And so a lot of people get into IT and then they take programming and they wind up hating programming. Not everybody's a programmer. Or they wind up not liking this or they like that. But IT is a real big umbrella for, for a lot of different things. And so there's a misnomer there which a lot of people right up front don't get. And in, even in college here, a lot of people go into IT and it's not what they think because all of a sudden now they're programming or they're doing operations work and they go, I don't like this. This isn't me. And the other misnomer is that you need to be a math expert. You don't. But logic helps. The ability to just figure out, like a branching scenario, that's logic. Where do I go from here to here to there? And if they can do logic, they can pretty much do this kind of learning or other programming. Um, and, you know, I was, I was a programmer for 20-something years and I wasn't that great at math, but I was good at logic. That's all you really needed. And, and the math, you could always look up if you need a formula or something. But it but, is interesting. But, but well, Rick, yeah. Rick, is it logic? Is it logic or is it storytelling? And it's if you think about it, both. if you think yeah. about it, we've, yeah, it's both. But all these girls have grown up being told stories. That's right. And yeah. read stories and you know okay we're stopping the book tonight we're stopping at this chapter what's going to happen next mm -hmm. mm. yeah and i and think that's the bit for them that's what they're doing you know they're telling a story yeah, yeah. and that's you know and part of that is logic i mean if you think about it yeah. but when i say logic that's about as advanced as you need to be in terms of being a programmer you don't need to be a scientific wizard. In fact, most programmers don't write anything scientific. They're doing business applications or other things. Most web developers aren't programmers. A lot of them are, some aren't, but they're doing things for the web rather than for the whole general universe, if you know what I mean. You don't need to know everything. You need to know what you need to know, and that can make you very successful. So what I see you know, in these kind of things is the girls have a tool, 
But within the two, you've got a lot of abilities to do different things. And some, Muhammad, correct me if I'm wrong, some will oscillate to the more complex things, others will keep it simple, but they all take advantage of the same tool. It's true, actually, you're right. And uh, I think we saw that, didn't we, Leslie, when we went to Unicorn? Yeah. Um, because Unicorn, they work in teams, so they'll have mm. uh, a graphic designer and a learning designer yeah. and a programmer and a project manager in one team. They call it like a hub, don't they? Mm -hmm. And then they'll have another mm. one doing another project. And so then they had like one of their teams there talking to the girls. And as they spoke to the girls and looked at the girls' work, you could, they even commented that they could see the girls themselves graduating, graduating into you know, specific directions. So like Sophie, you remember little Sophie? She's really keen on yeah. graphics and she'll spend ages you know, making a graphic. So she could be, maybe she was gonna go into a graphic design, whereas others would be more to do with the logic between the things like you were talking about, Rick. So maybe they'll be going more into the technical side or programming or coding or, you know. And so it, it's really interesting because it's like giving them a step to go forward into these different areas. Um, and I think another thing is, it's true about the degree, but I think, I think also it, uh, most people, not even just kids, they don't know about e-learning, really. They yeah. don't know about the whole industry. Yeah. They don't know what a learning designer is. When I say to people, oh, I'm getting into learning design and doing some freelance learning design, they're like, what? What's that? And I'm like, well, it's kind of like web design, but it's not really. It's like <laughs> and you have to have a whole conversation, don't you? you know? So I think that the industry as a whole has got so much to offer um, young people, especially people you know, who need a way forward or a way that is maybe not necessarily the mm -hmm. traditional way of university and all the rest of it. Um, and and it, it, clubs like this, I feel, if we kind of build them out, they could be really good, you know, in this country, in the States, yep. um, wherever, you know. Well, it's a great idea, absolutely great idea. And, you know, you, you're touching on a point that we've talked about on the show years ago, not that much recently, but that the universities are overkill for most of the careers people need out there. I really believe we should have more of a trade school approach to to learning, for example, what you know, what e-learning is, what training is. You don't need to have a, a four-year career for that. And it doesn't even make sense to. It's a lot of baggage that comes around a lot of the degrees, especially here in the States. There's, you know, when you get into college here, you're repeating high school again, which makes no sense at all. Um, so the first four years of bachelor's are equivalent to what most Europeans call the baccalaureate program. And very few schools do that here. So you get to college and you go, why, why am I doing this all over again? So now the master's is the new bachelor's as it used to be. And again, so we waste forever time to get to the point where people can work. And that doesn't okay. make any sense. So. And they I get think, into a lot of debt. <laughs> mm -hmm. In, in yeah. the UK, we call it, which was the area that I specialized in, we call it vocational yes. education. Yes, exactly. Um, and vocation, to me, vocational education is incredibly important. Yeah. And yeah. in the UK, you can actually do an apprenticeship in digital learning design. I was involved oh, in that. And so were some of the and so were some of the top people in the UK, and yet nobody knows about it. So there are only four, <laughs> so you talk about your colleges, mm -hmm. there are only the equivalent of four colleges in the whole of England hmm. that are offering it. Interesting. Now here, we had the, the great wisdom of our leadership, as we call it, uh, to get rid of all the vocational studies in high schools. So kids who could have been car mechanics, uh, uh, anything, auto mechanics, they took it all away. And you just go, oh. So, yeah. so they have to graduate high school, then go to some sort of technical school to get those skills, whereas before they could, out of school, immediately get jobs. So, you know, it's, leadership yeah. is great, <laughs> can I say. Yeah. Uh, Short-sighted at I best. Mean the, the problem is the school system mm -hmm. in general is, is so outdated, isn't it? I yes. mean, it's this Victorian model of schooling, yep. like this factory of schooling children. Right. And it's kind of modeled on, on prisons almost. I, and it, as a teacher, right. a lot you're of the right. time, you, you actually feel like a prison warden mm -hmm. because <clears throat> most of the kids don't want to be there. No. So you're battling to teach people 
who don't actually want to be there. So really, the only, the only, the first thing that needs to happen is you need to say, okay, if you don't want to be here, off you go. <laughs> and, yeah, then, and, and then and, you can teach to people and, who want to be there. But of course, you can't say that because, no. you know. And, and if you look at the results, the schools, I imagine you're similar to us. The, we train at the lowest common denominator. So the, the smart kids are lost. They're, they go, well, I'm bored. I have nothing to do here. Uh, and there are special schools for the smarter kids, but there aren't that many of them. And then the middle kids are pretty bored too. And then so we're training at the lowest common denominator who doesn't even care that much. And you just go, something's wrong with that whole. And, and you're right. It's very similar to a prison that's system a in a lot of ways. People think that's a joke, but I've been in the prison system doing training actually and taking recording filming training it's not far different from high school it's a little scary when you go into prison go my god i think i spent four years in one of these things once and it was called <laughs> high school so you're very right yeah. it's interesting good analogy yeah anyway it, it i think is. we're we're kind of running we're we're kind of running over time aren't i know we, but it, just, hey it happens <laughs> we're having a good such time an interesting topic it and is. i say if, if yeah. anybody anybody does want to any of the any of the people who are viewing or afterwards do want to get involved in setting up an e-learning club um, mm -hmm. you know Muhammad and I would be absolutely delighted to give advice um, if the particularly if the young people then want to create content so the girls that Muhammad is working with have actually been in touch with Eric and are making content that Eric has said nice. that the people in his community need. And we're now going to be starting a new project out in Nigeria where we're actually going to be deploying capsules in schools. Oh, great. So again, wow. we're going to be looking for if, if people want to set up e-learning clubs where the kids are actually talking about in the learning that they create about what they're doing at school, that would be fantastic. That's really interesting. That's right. And yeah. do you have and anything maybe they on could your, even oh, communicate we're talking, with the students in Nigeria. That would be great. That would be. Yeah. While we're talking, is there anything on the Learn Appeal site about maybe create an e-learning club? Not yet. That would be good Not to yet. have because then you could, you know, as we kind of yeah. get people to go to your website, maybe that'd be yeah. something that yeah. says, hey, you know, I want to do yeah. a e-learning club. What do we I do? Have got, we, have got, we have got Build Your Career. But obviously, that's a job for tomorrow now, Rick. You've given me. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome. <laughs> I'll help you, Leslie. <laughs> oh, gee, thanks, Mohammed. Uh, you You've guys are great. You know what? You guys are great. You're doing good you. stuff for a lot of people. So, yeah. you know. But uh, seriously, if anybody does, listening does, or watching does want to, does think, wow, a new learning club could yep. be fun. And we'll put links Mohammed below. Mohammed and I would be quite happy. Yeah. Yeah, Mohammed we'll put and links I'd be quite below. happy to give advice. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Well, we are, like you said, out of time, but hey, sometimes we're having a really good time. So, <laughs> Mohammed, thank you so much for coming on, and, and we're glad you could no, make it pleasure. on again after the first snafu that we had. And, no and Leslie, as always, a pleasure. And um, if you have any interest, like Leslie said, just go to the Learn Appeal site and contact Mohammed or Leslie, and, and they'll help you either get started with the Learning Club or give you an idea of how to do it. So we'll see you next week on eLearn Chat. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Hey, thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. And that's a wrap.